before we get started. So thank you all for coming. Um, I would very much like to welcome our speaker this evening, the Sen Agni Singh. I really hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry. So Sen's been in the marine industry for over 35 years and working with dynamic um, positioning for almost 18. We've had extensive experience with um, shipbuilding and uh, marine electrical engineering. He's been involved with the Institute for many years himself. He is also a fellow of the RMRS and a chartered marine engineer and is involved in one of our professional review interviews. So I'm very happy to welcome him here for tonight's lecture. Or is yours? Thank you, Catherine. Um, good evening to all and um, thank you very much for watching this uh, presentation. And, uh, yeah, the title of the presentation is the uh, dynamic position for incident pre operations. So, two, two things we have to talk about dynamic position and operation of the dynamic position. Okay. But, uh, let me talk about my company that I'm working with. Uh, I don't know, so I'm sorry, based in uh, Tower Bridge. So, our company started uh, in 1979. London, and then we are providing independent uh, marine uh, engineering consultancy and uh, survey. And uh, we have uh, high quality services to the shipping industry, offshore and industry. Also, we have a team of uh, 400 professionally qualified uh, people uh, that are in the world. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the DB uh, systems, their operations and uh, failure modes and uh, the risk in using DB systems and then how we can mitigate the risk. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask, uh, talk about what is the position. Position keeping. There are many ways of keeping position. One of the uh, thing is keeping using the dynamic position. And uh, at sea, why we want to keep a vessel in a position without uh, moving or anything? There are certain applications uh, where we can. One of uh, them is this uh, to see this vessel. Um, this is a cable layer vessel. Actually, it's all designed by our company. And uh, this vessel is a dynamically positioned cable laying ship. So this can lay cables uh, uh, at any uh, kind of uh, certain depth and then maintain position while keeping the uh, laying the cable. And I talk about the manual positioning also. We, we can also maintain the position manual, uh, manual being to. So some of them are like this, with a mooring system. You can use mooring anchors and things like that. If you look at this, uh, this is a barge actually, the mooring barge. So, used to break cables again. So, this, that's the limitations of this uh, the mooring uh, vessel. So if you go to deep uh, uh, sea, deep sea, and then the mooring, the anchors will not be in the long enough to go uh, to lay the cables and hold the position of the, uh, the barge. And then there's another way of doing it, uh, the jacking system. So this diagram shows a picture of the uh, jacking system. So the jacking also, there are restrictions uh, in which you can uh, use this uh, jack out. Therefore, dynamic vision functioning can be uh, better suited for this kind of operation. And there are also restrictions in the seabed, like you know, pipe plates and there are a lot of structures in the seabed. So that should not be uh, damaged by using jacking uh, systems or anchors. So therefore, dynamic cohesion means uh, dynamic cohesion chips are well suited for this kind of operation. And uh, you can also see there are two vessels in this one, no? near the, the, the middle picture. You can see that is another one. So that is actually a dynamic position vessel. 
the reason why they use this uh, DP vessel alongside the, the barge is that this uh, particular mooring uh, barge got a contract to lay cables in a restricted area. The contractor wanted the vessel to go on DP. So what we did was actually we hired another DP vessel and moved alongside this vessel, connected this vessel and kept the position using the DP vessel. But there were a lot of other work involved in doing that. That means we need to change the mass of the, the complete uh, bodies, you know, two, two masses now. Uh, the DP model has to be changed. So there are a lot of work involved, but it was very successful. We did it in 2016. Um, so that's one example of uh, using DP vessels in um, offshore operations. So, we talk about the ships now, but what are the things that will prevent keeping a position of a diamond position ship? Like if you keep there, there must be some forces pushing it away from the position. So, these are like could be uh, environmental forces and then also uh, some external forces. We'll talk about those things now. Right? One of the environmental forces is wind and the wave drift, also uh, the sea current. So these are the environmental forces that push the vessel or the DP vessel away from the desired uh, position. And external forces, you can see that the lifting operation is very good. These vessels are also used for uh, lifting operations. So when they are lifting something, and this, there's the mark C again. So those things are included uh, in the complete uh, thing and the DP model uh, changes. So therefore, uh, the model has to be changed and then the DP system has to work against the, uh, the forces. And the other one is pipeline operation. You can see that this is the biggest uh, or the largest uh, construction in the world uh, for mining spirit. And uh, the cable can do many um, offshore work, but one of them is cable lay. So this cable lay vessel also has uh, external forces. Uh, when a pipe is laid through this thing, and there will be a tension coming from the stinger. So the, the, what is shown in the center is the string actually. So that force has to be included in the calculation of the DP system. That means the, the DP model has to uh, be tuned to get that thing and then show that the vessel can maintain the position. And there's another one, another type of uh, external force, the riser, you know, drilling systems and uh, you have the rise of force which is also dragging the vessel away from the position. And uh, as you know, and most of you know, uh, the vessel has about six degree of freedom to move. And out of six degrees, dynamic position system controls only three degrees. So, two of the, the degrees are like the surge and sway. So how do you measure the search and change? By using the position difference system. I'll talk about the position difference system in detail in later part of this uh, presentation. And the other thing is the sway. So yo. Yo is measured by the gyro compass. Basically it is the angle or orientation of the result. And the other three um, the degrees of freedom uh, movements are the pitch, rod and heave. So these three are measured by the MRU or motion reference unit or VRS, vessel reference unit, so they call it that. So that equipment can measure the pitch, roll and heave. So these three things are not controlled by the EP system. The ship is pitch, roll and heave. But uh, the only thing that controls is the search, J and Yo. Of course, there are ways of controlling the, the pitch and things like it, but DP system so far I have not used as far as, far as I know. Now, this slide we will talk a little more about the, the, the dynamic of this. You can see here, um, see the three poles I showed about the wind, current, and the uh, wave 
So these are the three forces basically. Environmental forces that push the vessel away from the location for the orientation of the heading and the position. When the environment the if the environmental forces are pushing the vessel in one direction, the vessel itself push it back against that thing to maintain the position. How it is done is using the thrusters. So I'll talk to you more about the how the thrusters uh, utilize their forces to counteract the, uh, the forces coming from the environment. And if these three forces are coming in different directions, the DP system calculates the resultant force against uh, acting against on the act on the vessel. And then the thrusters will be utilized to create an opposing force towards the, that direction, the resultant direction. And and also uh, the DP system uses like we put about at least four or five thrusters around the vessel. So each thruster will have a different uh, thrust demand and the direction. So that is called thrust allocation. Also done by the DP control system. There are so many other things we know in, but the end result is that thrust again, each and every thrust again. So this thrust has to give me give, uh, this much of force, magnitude and the direction. So that is, these are the two important things. Now, we we'll talk about some more operations, right? Lifting operation. This is again the, the biggest uh, construction we have uh, uh, as well, uh, so far built in the world. So this is this of uh, platform. This is the top side of a platform. This vessel can go alongside uh, near the platform and take that one lift. So this is called by me, Yima project. Uh, the platform, this was removed by using this big construction vessel. And then the second one is a drilling, so single submersible drilling ship. So this can go, uh, it's a rig basically, can go, go and deep, so this can drill uh, to, to 2,000 meters. So, uh, other type of the recommendation. So this is the platform. You see that thing, the uh, platform, and uh, platform and so and the vessel. So this is the recommendation method. <coughs> so the platform doesn't have enough uh, space for the people to live. Therefore, they have this uh, uh, recommendation method. Uh, Every day they start by from morning to evening. Morning they go on the, the platform and do the work. Evening they come and they sleep from the accommodation. Uh, uh, that is maintained by dynamic pressure. Water depth is so much that cannot be anchors or anything. Therefore, DP has to be working with that. And then the last one is the sea launch. You, know, you must have heard about this launch in rocket something. That is also in dynamic position. So that's sea launch. Some more operations like the cruise ships. The cruise ships also use DP now. This was built in 2001. <coughs> called DP 1. I talk about the classification of DP later on. Yes. For the woman, let's remember this is the, the DP vessel. And then uh, the platform support vessel. There are many uh, vessels required for supporting the platform day to day activities. And those have, those have to be in a dynamic position. So, the third one is a uh, service operation vessel used for wind farm industry. So, there are a lot of the wind farm industry is another industry which is growing very fast. So, the service, so the maintenance of these wind farms are very, very important. Therefore, these vessels go from turbine to turbine and uh, discharge the technicians uh, to the, the turbine and then uh, this has to be on TP also. And you can see that the gangway connected to the while connected to the gangway, the vessel stay should, should stay in the position. If the vessel loses the position, if you go and hit the turbine, no, there will be a lot of damage in the territory. <coughs> there is another one that is called DP checkup. So, this is a wind turbine insulation. So, the vessel goes 
uh, near where <coughs> the turbine needs to be stored and then do the jacking and then after that uh, do the, uh, the vessels of the uh, installation of the, uh, the turbine. And this is subsea construction research on DP. This is like a oceanographic survey method. And then <coughs> these are like ROV diving support vessels and things like that. There's so many other applications, but this are a few of them. And <coughs> there are many ways of uh, controlling the, uh, the, the DP vessel. This is like the modes of operation. The voice check mode. Auto heading and then auto pilot, auto positioning, and auto track, uh, target follow. If you want to send an ROV first and then the target from there, the vessel will follow the ROV. <coughs> and this is something which is very important capability analysis. With the capability analysis, this will tell you a lot of information about any vessel LTP. It's very, very important. I talk about the environmental forces uh, at the beginning of my presentation. So this one, um, this is the vessel orientation. You can see that this is the heading. So if you see this blue color uh, plot here around the vessel, it shows the wind speed at so the directions of this one. If the wind is hitting from the north or so the head wind, so it can take the we speed up to uh, 100 knots, close to 100. So vessel can still stay in the position. For example, if the wind is coming from this direction, so you can see that it is reduced to about, this is a 40, and then <coughs> about 45 uh, knots of wind. Uh, low so, that is not the only cause. Now we need to consider current also. So this plot will reduce if the current is from this side, maybe 1 knot to 1.5 knot. So, depending on the wind, so the current also this will reduce. So, the three things they need to consider the wave height, uh, sea current, and the wind. So, based on that, this plot is developed. And there's another thing we need to consider to know the thrusters can deliver the give the force in search, say, and yoke to maintain the position and the heading. What is also important is to have the, the power, electrical power. If you see this table, now you see at zero angle, so what is the kilowatt for each by each cluster? So there are five clusters in this particular vessel, and out of these five clusters, I feel the total power, is this one. That power has to be available in the power plant. So therefore the power system has to be designed so that it can deliver the sufficient power to the cluster to uh, <coughs> develop the, the required thrust to maintain position. So not only that, this, there are some industrial missions, lifting operations, so pipe play or auxiliary system, so this, those have to be also included in this, I you know, call it as uh, the load, the electrical load analysis. That is a very important document. And we need to make sure that there are enough power to uh, uh, the thrusters and the other equipment. I will talk more about this in the later part of the thing. And uh, just to give you an idea of what a TP system is, so this will show some components of the um, important components of the TP system. So you can see the DP operator. Okay. So this is the DP operator station. And next one, the position resonance system. You can see we call it PRS, so position resonance system. So here we have TGPS, the position resonance one and two, and the radius. We use this uh, radio signals to get this thing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, radius. There are three position reference systems here and the other sensors like VRS or MRU, so these are the things I mentioned about roll pitch and heel measured by this system and then gyro for in the heading and the wind sensor to get this environment before. So the <coughs> wind sensor, the wind sensors measure the wind speed and then uh, thrusters, <coughs> the thrusters here and then uh, 
uh, you also have the process station. This is the, the actual control to all these things, the, the calculations, uh, manipulation, everything done by this station. And uh, of course, we need power. I mentioned about the so this is a power plant. The power plant is delivering sufficient power to so, This is the basic uh, or the minimum requirement for a DP system. And there's another system along with the DP that is required by the club called independent joystick system. This is totally independent of the independent of the DP system. If, you, if the DP system fails, this system actually will be able to control the vessel. This has only manual positioning, but not automatic positioning, and then automatic heading. So these are the requirements of the <coughs> this is basically basic uh, DP control system. So, so DP operator says the wanted position and then the position or the actual position is measured by the, the PRS or position reference system and PD is uh, comparator. From there you get an error. Based on the error, DP control decides where the vessel has to be moved, whichever type of, and based on that give the thrust allocation from here and give each thruster how much thrust for the magnitude and the direction. So that is going by the control. It's a basic control. There are a lot of other things, model control and everything. I'm not going to talk about that here. So this is a basic control. And then again, environment for so this can be used as a feed forward. This is a feedback loop, this is a feed forward actually. Before the, the system gets the feedback, to measure the uh, environment forces wind speed basically here in the chain. So that is fed uh, beforehand. So it has a fast uh, control system. That's <coughs> this is a power system. So there you can see a lot of components in fact most of you identify these two. The basic uh, power and propulsion system. A little bit more talk about this. <coughs> There are two sections of switchboard, four generators within this one, uh, each side, and then you got six, uh, five, uh, six thrusters. One, two, three, four, five, six, six thrusters, and you know, this generator is a basic switchboard. So I will talk about those things a little bit. Now this, you can see that there is a bus tie, there is a bus tie between the two sections, this goes, and uh, there is a thruster, VT1 can be fed on this side or this side port or starboard or A or B, whatever you call it, right? And then you can see the green light, uh, green indication means this system is that, but the indication source open, which is not correct actually. Right. Now we talk about the, the failure something. I like to talk a little bit about uh, the accidents and things like that. So, uh, there was a presentation in the European DP conference, uh, which was held on the 6th of February. And uh, Mr. Andy Goldsmith, the, the technical advisor to INCA, International Marine Contract Association, he has these figures, you know, he did a presentation. He said there were about 98 events that has happened uh, during 2017 of 75 different vessels. And out of that, there were 17 DP incidents. These are like a major failures, environmental or human error, whatever <coughs> thing. So they have 17 real failures, that means loss of position and things like that. And there was another uh, 56, he call it event, environmental and uh, <coughs> failure of uh, systems, uh, redundancy and all these things. So it was, you know, and also he talk about another the observation, that these are minor things. So why these are happening? That is something we have to actually consider the DP system, if we are going to say, is it fail safe or uh, incidentally, this is, things should not happen. How we can improve the system is a question mark. To maintain the, the robustness of the system and the reliability and uh, things like that. <coughs> so out of these failures also he has categorized uh, uh, these things, computer failures about <coughs> 15 or something, electrical <coughs> system failure, environmental <coughs> forces, uh, and then uh, external factors, human error, position reference system failures, power system failures, thrust to propulsion. This is how he has 
seen that, you know, for the last year, it's only one year. I think this is significant, it should not have been that long. So how you mitigate those things? How you can address these things, right? And uh, safe, safe system design. This is basically required by class. Fail safe means any system or component fail, it should be failed to safe state. For example, if a propeller fails or starts to fail, it should not be failed to an uncontrollable station. For example, if the propeller is running at 50%, after failing, it should not go to 100%. So that's how this is the requirement, basic requirement. But then, basically, the DP systems are made in redundancy. No, these two controllers. I talk about the DP operation. You can see there are two here, there are three. So, out of thing, three is even better, but two uh, systems are right enough. They have to be totally independent. And then, uh, talk about the other other equipment. Like this diagram, which shows the two systems which I mentioned. There is a two power system. Port is port bus, uh, starboard bus, and then the propeller, bus bus, the, the red color and uh, the green color one. If, for example, there is a single failure, causes to lose one group, and the other group will still be alive or surviving. So that surviving group should be able to maintain the position under the specific uh, environment that has to be specified in the design and to be. Uh, Simulated in the capability and then show that what are the limiting environmental conditions. So, the redundancy design intent is specified at the design stage and then the system has to be designed as per the design intent and then uh, they call it the worst case failure design intent. So I will explain more about the worst case failure design intent. This is has, this has to be uh, specified in the design level. And a little <coughs> more about the redundant group. Then you can see this is a total uh, DP control system. So this one control, the other one. Uh, <coughs> by a redundant network. Uh, these are the sensors, like here, the, the gyro, one, two, three, and then the wind sensors measure the environmental forces, the heading, and then the power plant, and then the, the position reference system, and the top. So, a single failure should not cause loss of all these, uh, for example, gyros. Therefore, they have to be redundant power supplies and the connection, and they have to be all having redundant. So, one of the most important thing, uh, we see the failures of the position sensor. Uh, PR exposure reference. There are various types of position reference systems, but they cannot be used for everywhere. So they have, they have to be like, depending on the operation, you have to select what type of position reference systems are suitable for the operation. One is the GPS or DGPS, and the other one, the hydroacoustic system, uh, called HPR or HIRLIN, and there's the laser system size scan and different names are there mm -hmm. and also the thought wire. Now the important thing is that the class requires that at least three position reference systems should be there operating in two different principles. For example, if you're going to use three DGPS, that is not good enough because if there is atmospheric condition which uh, environmental condition which that's all the signals coming into the, uh, the ship and then you lose the position. Similarly, uh, this is called common mode failure. And then, uh, similarly, uh, the, if you use three HPR, that can be the same, uh, give the same result. Likewise, at least uh, there will be two uh, operating systems, so, uh, operating in two principles. If you lose one uh, operating uh, system, the other one will be there. At least, uh, system will not lose the first thing, right? Yes. And this is how you can see even, you know, just to show a little bit more about what will happen if you uh, lose one section, you can see this, this is the original one, and then after losing uh, one section, as a result of a single failure, you can see only one section is there. This is 
taken from an actual ship actually when we did the paleo punch section. Right. Now the capability I talk about the feeling is again coming to the important thing. Now you see these two plots. So if you look at here, this is this has got about when the wind is hitting from uh, 90 degrees, it's got about 50 degrees of uh, 50 knots of wind can be done. Now here reduced to about 20. That's the important thing. And the vessel should not operate under the uh, environmental condition more than this. The important thing is that the vessel should stay in position after experiencing the worst case failure of the vessel. The so worst case failure is maybe one or two redundant group of the, uh, the vessel. After that, what is surviving, surviving uh, equipment or the thruster should be able to maintain position or this is the limitation. So the vessel should never operate over the limitation. That means you are operating over the, the, the capability of the vessel. So that is one way of avoiding the uh, incident. Certain vessels, depending on certain ap applications so the industrial emission can allow the vessel to move the heading. So in case you have you are allowed to move the, the, the heading, or then you can keep on changing the, the, the heading of the vessel so that the wind is always sitting from the strong point. Right? In that case it can go up to about 60 knots of wind. So the vessel can be oriented so that uh, it's always uh, the, the winds are coming from, uh, the wind is uh, hitting from the head or even the, the stern side. Right? And also again, we need to look at the capability, sorry, the, the load analysis. You see that there is enough electrical power remain after having the failure. <clears throat> there are a lot of industry standards now uh, to uh, maintain the, the, the standards of the vessel. So, uh, one of the international regulations, FAFD and society, ODP and the guide for DP, the international marine contract that I talk about. And then there's another association for marine technology society, basic Houston. And then uh, there are other requirements, charter, then I'm also doing starting as well, I have my own requirement. Similarly, so oil majors, they have their own requirement. So these people have to fulfill those requirements before they are being charted. The regulation IMO 645 and then this is uh, updated to, to a 1580 in 2017. And then flag states, postal states requirement, marine post guard this Norwegian maritime character and you know, there are so many others. These are few of them. So the regulation and IMO 65. So this is actually provides an internal stand standard standard. I propose only the design criteria, equipment, operating and the requirement of test and documentation system. And, but IMO is only uh, giving the guidance but they are not implementing the, the, the flag state and the classification society, they follow the guidance, the, the recommendation, and then they will classify this, develop the rules based on that, and uh, black state, they ask for their requirement, and so these are the three, now based on all these things that I talk about now, we, we know about the failures, uh, the, the, the Redundancy and based on the redundancy criteria, the, there are three categories of DP systems in general. But certain classification societies like ABS, they have four. But in general, there are three: uh, DP one, DP two, and DP three. And ABS has DP zero. Uh, the DP class one is a single system, and then independent joystick. I showed you in the beginning the independent joystick. And here you can see the DP class one, one single system, joystick, and the DP uh, class two uh, is this one. You can see two controllers, you already seen that again, and then the system, and the DP three, this one, the last one. So in the difference in DP three is that uh, lots of uh, compartment, like you no, know, they have to have 
is considered. Uh, if you, if <coughs> the vessel lose one compartment, the, uh, the DP system still has to work. Loss of compartment by five or five. And uh, independent joystick and everything remains same. The only difference is that it has additional uh, class, uh, additional DP controller kept in the fire uh, the fire rated uh, compartment. So it's on the bridge or somewhere. Uh, you don't look at the what size is only the fire separation. Equipment class one. Loss of is not okay in general, single failure, active component. The DP2 is only talking about active component, not static component like pipes, <laughs> manual control valves, and uh, things like that. Uh, sorry, cable, cables, pipes, and uh, things like that. And the class 3, yes, now we consider everything, even static components like a pipe failure or by birth, everything. Therefore, it is important that the cable route has to be selected in such a way that both the redundant group cables are not going to one uh, compartment. If that compartment is lost, both the system will be affected. It's very important that this has to be uh, studied properly and designed the vessel so that the single loss of a single compartment may not affect uh, both the uh, redundant or may all the redundant groups. It's not necessarily that we have only two redundant groups, it can be three, four, depending on the requirement at uh, the design of course. <coughs> I talk about the worst case failure design then the worst case failure design intent is uh, you can define in different ways. One is that the maximum component or the system uh, that will be lost as a single uh, failure or the minimum equipment remaining or surviving after a single failure is called uh, first case failure designing day. And then surviving machinery should be able to uh, provide uh, trust in sway, yo and uh, the, sway, uh, the surge in order to maintain first one. So that's the minimum uh, requirement. And again, this is again the, the two system configuration from 2 6 okay? and uh, you can see here that the state of the 13 and then if we have again a failure of one section, the section will maintain the position. And here you can see that this first tie between the two sections can be operated open or closed. If you operate it closed, now as per this drawing, this diagram so that this is closed and only one generator is online. Right? So what happens if you fail, you lose that generator and fail that some uh, blackout then you lose the position. Therefore it is important that you maintain minimum number of generators so that a single failure will not cause loss of position or blackout. And there it is also important that this first type breaker is kept open or have adequate protection to open the bus type in case of the short circuit here. Then a short circuit here. So on this, the radar will see the short circuit and start feeling that there will be a voltage peak here on this main bus. And that will just go so clusters and some equipment. So there are extensive uh, analysis to prove that the system is fail safe. And this is another system called LAC concept. Lawless, lawless concept developed by, I mean, <coughs> developed by Barcilla. So you can see that this connection between the starboard side and the transformer is good. There is a phase shift of 30 degrees between each other. Uh, that will help cancel the harmonics of this two six pulse bridge and then the fifth and sixth harmonic. So the harmonic is another issue when you have power electronics. So the chopping the wave the signal, the AC is creating a lot of harmony. So that's one advantage of the system, but there are disadvantages also. In order to overcome these disadvantages, there are advanced protection systems. This is something I will want to... You see that this is the same thing, how the system is protected, you can see from here. All these uh, the 
relay logic. So this is now this can be operated as a ring system. You see, if you close this first gate and then everything will work as a ring system and closing only. Right? If there is a short circuit, in here you can see there is this 0.3 seconds, within 0.3 seconds the bus type brake will open. For example, if there is a short circuit here and this will be accelerated and this healthy section will maintain the position or give the, the, the power to the thrusters and then for the position of the And here, the, if the short circuit here and then within 4 seconds the, 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 the transform will be open and then it's in the position. And then the generator, if there is a port here in this one and the, the, the generator will go down. This will open in 0.5 seconds. Well, that is, there is a short circuit in one here, here. So that's the differential protection. So you measure the current from here and here, and there is a difference in the current. So there is a short uh, imbalance in the section here, and we compare with the other side. Uh, then that, <coughs> when the difference is there, and it will open the button. Then the fault is isolated. So that, that's basically how the system works. I can talk more about this, but uh, take a lot of time to explain each and everything. And uh, over current protection and all kind of thing. And there's another thing which is very important in the power management system. All these the graphics I showed you, you know, all the, the, the screenshots from the power management system. So the basic function of power management, uh, so many other things, but I have only put a few of them uh, because the time you can talk about it, you can take this about power management system. So the main thing is uh, the, the status of the generators, breakers, but bus tie breakers are displayed here. It's very important that operators uh, understand uh, these things, how the state, what the status are. They are not going, uh, people are not sitting at the switchboard and uh, the generator and everything no, locally. So this has to be uh, stated here in the power management system from the engine control room, the uh, engineers are pushing this. Right? Then here, yeah. it also calculates the available power. Based on the generators connected to the system, it knows how much power is available. And also the consumed power is also calculated. Based on that, they were, what is the spinning reserve? Spinning reserve is the difference between the available power and then uh, the consumed power. But people differ, uh, interpret it different way, but that's one way of telling. So, system knows that how much power is available now, <coughs> reserve power is available. And for example, if the weather condition suddenly picks up and then the thruster started taking more power, and then the system knows that this uh, then what does it do? It, it delays that uh, thruster, uh, giving the power to the thruster and then <coughs> start another generator. For example, here, maybe start this generator. And then, you got enough power to feed the system. And then, <coughs> it's also load dependent start. This is, you can run these vessels economically. When you have the load, load dependent, uh, load uh, dependent stops. If you have, for example, five generators are now running, but uh, you don't need that much power, the total power, maybe half of that power is in. So the system automatically switch off or remove one of, or two generators based on the, uh, the excessive power in this one. And the other one is blackout from prevention. It's very important. The vessel should not blackout. The DP ship ideally should not, uh, DP 2 and 3 should not have blackout, but it will happen. Uh, how you stop that? The, these are the protection functions uh, uh, given by this one. I said the word already about load dependent start of generator and then power limitation. That's another one. For example, if another example I'm showing that if you lose this section and then the power is reduced, thrusters are reduced, and therefore we need the system has to. Uh, reduce the consumed power, therefore send signals to the thrusters, thrust drivers, so, and they reduce the power. Then the, the thrusters can take only that much power, so it's reduced. And then there are uh, 
generators available uh, on standby and then start those generators and try to use. And then also, if, if any uh, heavy consumers, uh, heavy uh, load consumers try to start, then have a function called start blocking. The system will not allow this uh, heavy consumers to start. And another function called preferential trip of non-essential consumer. These are categorized at the system configuration. So when this uh, thing happens, the power management system <coughs> automatically trip those non-essential consumer and maintain the stability of the power plant and deliver the power based on the availability of the power. So it's again very important to go back to the load analysis and the capability analysis. These all are interlinked. So the designers have to design in such a way that there is enough power to deliver the uh, thrusters and the thrusters have the capability to maintain position under specific environmental conditions that define environmental condition should be stated very clearly and the vessel operator should not operate this vessel beyond that limitation. So that's safe way of rating the vessel. And there's another function called automatic blackout, uh, blackout recovery. Even though then the vessels are not supposed to have blackout, can happen. If that happens, so automatically it recovers, you know, within seconds the generator will start and connect to the system, the healthy side. If there is a short circuit, for example, here, these generators will not connect to the system, will connect to the other side. The system is clever enough to understand the, the failure. So now, how you, I mean, through all these things, now the redundancy concept, fail safe and all things, there is a process called failure mode and effect analysis. So that is required by class. The classification society see that whether these uh, FMEs are there and the FMEA should show whether a single failure is exceeding the worst case failure or within the worst case failure design engine. If it's exceeding the worst case failure design intent, the class will not give the certificate to the person in the initial instance. And say, okay, we need to update to redesign the system and then uh, show that the result is within the, uh, the design um, worst case failure. That FMEA is actually uh, engineering uh, analysis. So, desktop analysis, first of all, we analyze each and every system or go to redundant criteria, state the independence of the redundant group. If a group has a cross connection with another one, then the cross connection has to be analyzed to see whether a failure within the cross connection will affect both the side or many sides, depending on the, the redundant equipment group. The important thing is that the, as per the uh, worst case failure design, then the surviving group should not be affected by the other group, should be independent. So that uh, process is called FMEA. So the FMEA does the first analysis and then based on the analysis, it develops a, a test program called proving trial team. And then the, the, uh, based on the analysis, the proving trial, proving trial should be conducted after building the vessel and then show or prove that the system is fail safe or system Whatever is identified during the pro, uh, analysis will be proved uh, by the, this test. And then finally, the test have to prove that a single failure will not prove the position or uh, have a drive off. You know, single failure, as I said uh, in the beginning, a uh, fail safe concept. If a thruster fails to uncontrolled state, for example, from 25% to 100%, it might drive the vessel away from the position. So that is called drive off. So it should not happen. So those things have to be tested during the following time. And these are the benefits of classification, clarification of uh, design philosophy, transformation, redundancy concept, uh, compliance with the requirement, like the class rules, and then input to the engineering safety studies, feedback to the operating procedures and the plan maintenance system on board the personnel can use the this as a document to see the system because everything in this document 
will contain about the vessel ship. So they have a very good idea of what the FMEA says. And operator training, you know, if you want to train the operator, the operator should know how the vessel works and what are the systems on board. What will happen if a single failure happens to one system and he knows how to uh, the thing. And now, my title actually is, you know, incident to operation question mark. So how you going to <laughs> prove that they are fail safe? Because there is no guarantee that any system in engineering is 100% fail safe. Even though you design a system, there can be some failure. So we are trying to do to minimize the failure. And that cannot be done only by system design or during the FME. If you know the operator's configuration of the system, the operating in the, the limits of the, the weather, all these things have to be taken into consideration. So therefore, everybody involved in the DP uh, system operation and the offshore industry should they have a fair idea of what they are doing. I have seen in the industry they are taking so many risks by passing a lot of safety things. I don't want to talk about those things, but uh, I have seen uh, in the industry. So I have seen during uh, some tests, you know, the failure of thrusters to uncontrol is 100% and time off. So they get on and they fix the problem and then the vessel is safe. I, Blacking out chips, you know, I have one chip, I think, for four or five times with the chip blacked out in a, during the day. And they had to uh, improve the system so that the system did not blacked out. So those kind of things. It's important that the tests are conducted. These are some guidance to you know, ensure that the vessels are built as per the design concept. So you have the design concept, but the vessel is built as built, maybe different from that. The verification is required for that. That's one thing. And then <coughs> confirmation of redundancy concept. So that is done by the test, proving prior and the <coughs> and the system, the system as for the design you know, operating in principle. Huh? So operators have a big role to play. If their vessel is in the site and they have to do the configuration properly. Uh, for example, if uh, the vessel is designed to operate open bus. If you close the bus tires and operate, it is not fail safe. So the system uh, can lose the position if there is a problem. Because uh, open bus systems does not have to have the, uh, the, the advanced protection system to open the bus tire within a very short period. And also the right through, what is deep right through capabilities of the, the thrusters and the consumers, those are not required. So, for example, if they operate the vessel in close bus, then they are not designed to operate close path, then you are taking a risk. And, uh, and the other important thing is that operate uh, the with a defined environmental limit. We need to fully understand the, the what is written in the capability analysis. So it's very important document. So some people operate the vessels, I right, know, uh, on the full intact conditions. No? But if uh, failure happens, you know that you are going to lose one section. If you lose one section, your capabilities sink. And then, the vessel will, will lose the position. This other. And then, and again the electrical power. Afterwards in that, you might be connecting some other equipment to the, uh, the electrical system. Possible. It may not be, but can work. And then, the power system cannot deliver the, the, the power to the thruster to deliver the, uh, the required trust for so that again a problem. And then what is the ultimate design? Lose the position. And then operate the vessel with all the systems. So sometimes people use, okay, now I have problem with one thruster. So okay, this is a simple thruster, one thruster. So, but other can maintain the position, yes. But if you lose the position, uh, the thrusters from the other switch board, which they have all the switch board, and then the remaining or the surviving thruster, instead of three, will have two only. That two cannot deliver the thrust required to maintain position uh, within the, the operating limit. So again, the issue. So it's important that the vessel is operated. You know. Therefore, there have been a lot of guidance. There are a lot of guidance nowadays. Uh, I don't know, the ASOG. Okay, that means operating uh, 
operation specific guidance and the well operating well specific operation guidance and so many things in the industry now because of this incident different people have developed uh, this thing especially our MTS Inca and this thing they have contributed a lot uh, in the safe operation of uh, the DP vessels but the question is whether you follow them and the familiarization of vessel systems by operating people personal now read the FMEA and get the familiarization of this uh, system and then uh, regular drills they have to conduct by doing that they are very familiar with it and also uh, there are thing called annual DP trial every year as per the uh, IMO uh, and the IMCA uh, every vessel has to be tested for the uh, uh, maintenance and the uh, suitability of the vessel uh, to conduct on GP. And then use of trade and the competent uh, personnel to operate this. Operator training and familiarization. These are happening in things. some companies follow, some companies follow. So these are the kind of guidance of how. These are not the only thing, there are many others. But these are some of the, the, uh, the guidance that we can reduce the uh, incidence uh, related to the question. Right? I think uh, that's uh, my presentation. Thank you for being patient. Listen to me. Uh, yeah, you can ask questions or anything, I'm happy to answer. I know if I don't know, I will find an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Would you um, expect at, at the design stage, when you're designing the DP system, would you expect the system to be designed either for operation in the open site or closed the site, should be in all conditions, or would you expect that to be dependent on the site? Absolutely correct. It has to be designed at the design stage. We have to decide, okay, whether the vessel has going to be operated in open bus or closed bus. If you operate, if you want to operate in close bus, as I mentioned, there are a lot of advantages. For so close bus, there are a lot of advantages. You can reduce the carbon emission by using minimum number of generators. But the risk you are taking has to be <coughs> compromised or improved by using advanced protection system. <coughs> the close bus operation design is very expensive. My, my experience of it has been that there always seems to be some confusion. Uh, over whether a system should be operating open or closed, and a lot of different, different operators have different opinions. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Because the, the, that is the important thing that you know when you have this open bus, uh, closed bus system, the FME has to be really construct uh, kind of comprehensive. All this uh, uh, failure mode has to be analyzed. There are FMEs where you don't find the proper analysis of the. Uh, I give you some examples. I can go to Okay, look at this diagram now. The bus is closed. For example, we have one generator, one generator, right? What will happen if, if one of the generators fails to the maximum fuel or governor? Go to the maximum and then the load on the bus is less, I mean, the, on the cluster is less than the total of these two generators. What will happen? This is try to grab all the power, one generator. But after that, there is no power to take it. What will happen? This generator will fit that one. So therefore this will be like we call it motoring. So this will be fit on reverse power. You lose this generator and this generator is a faulty one. For some condition, certain condition whether the power demand may be increased, then you will not be able to do this one and this is fit. And, and on, other hand, on the other hand it can be fit on overboard to the power that's, a, that's one thing. And then uh, similarly excitation, uh, the AVR phase, should you say. And again, the short circuit here. 
will get wanted deep across the fall bust. And then protection system will open the bus tire within certain period. But before that, there is a voltage dip on the main bus. Those voltage dips will affect this running thruster. So they have to have this voltage dip right to capability. During the zero war, all this equipment should be running. So that's why they need to have a good uh, protection system. There are system failure for um, uh, the protection system for ADP, I don't know, advanced generator protection, DGMS, IBP, diesel generator maintenance system, and console we have ADS. So those things are integrated in the system that you have the, uh, the proper protection. <coughs> Answer to the question, yes. At the beginning of the design, they have to decide whether it's going to be you know, operating close bus open. For example, if the system is designed to operate in open bus, later on we decide, okay, I want to operate in closed bus. Then we need to install this additional protection system to prove that the system is a fail safe. I don't like to use the word fail safe, but the system is robust and the redundancy is there. That's all. Huh? Got a question online for an extra minute. Um, what is the time scale required to bring the DP to a stable position for operating limits for vessels due to environmental changes like a change in wind, current, or wave condition? I mean, once the model is uh, developed, uh, the, the should uh, stay in the position because the thruster should respond if the environmental condition changes. Uh, but within the limitation of the capability of the vessel. So within that period, it's a environmental condition, the vessel stays in the position, it should not go away from the, the position. Yeah, any yeah, it's not, it should not lose the position. Could you use a, a they should propeller with a suitable low rudders? From the combination with thrusters to provide a degree of DP. Is that what the, the, um, well, the, the crews are doing? Yes, it is done. You know, like uh, for example, they have this uh, uh, the system called uh, uh, shaft generators, the mechanical propulsion, uh, the, and then with the propeller. Uh, sorry, the rudder. Rudder is uh, helping uh, maintaining the bus. Rather, along with the, the uh, main production, yes, yes, yes. there are many vessels have that. So in the past, if you see the whole mechanical uh, engines, and, the, and they have rudder, propeller, everything. Even uh, nowadays, there are a lot. Like uh, the cruise ship I showed you, uh, that doesn't have that, you know, Ashipur actually. So. The one I showed you in that one, it got asphalt, so it got 360 degrees of return. So the main propellers are... The main are propellers are like, you know... thrusters anyway, yeah. yeah. They don't call it thrusters, as it was, they are 14 megawatt, you know, big ones. You can go inside the port also. So that's they retract, right. yeah. yeah. In fact, I used to work on that, so I used to... I was there during the, the build of that ship, you know, in 2001. So cool, so We have got one more that's just come in. Um, are there any situations where closed bus is safer? Yeah, it is safer as long as uh, the electric protection system is there and the analysis is done to prove uh, that the vessel is robust. Possible. There are many vessels, you know, I have involved in uh, analyzing closed bus operation, closed bus analysis, many vessels. Uh, I can give you even names so on, but uh, they are operating safe. They have the adequate protection. The only thing is, it is um, expensive to use the protection. But in the long run, the, uh, the vessel loan gains the uh, thing because they less, uh, burn less fuel. Well, that's how it works. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming.